Good afternoon. Welcome to our Thursday Live. Wherever you are watching, I hope that you will find some inspiration, be encouraged to give someone, someone something in your own house, a new breath of life and a second chance. Welcome to my barefoot studio in the beautiful Eastern Cape um, in South Africa. Our family and friends in Switzerland, Australia, New Zealand, Mauritius, other parts of Africa, and most, of, most important, my own South African Choco family and friends, welcome to our Thursday Live. Today I'm going to share some tips and techniques on how to use a dry brush technique and how to create something beautiful and very natural in your own space. Um, we recently moved to the Eastern Cape and it's such a beautiful area and something that we quite often see is driftwood in the national parks you're not you're not allowed to take any of it but yo, my heart bleeds to get my hands on those um, so I've decided to create something with a very old piece of furniture that I sourced from a second-hand store in um, Jeffrey's Bay and to show how easy it is to create so still a very natural look in your own space very important I'm working this piece was previously varnished and I have cleaned it thoroughly with lacquer thinners um, I always say I think it's lacquer to be thin you spell it l-a-c-q-u-e-r thinners but it sounds like the Afrikaans word lacquer so it's lacquer to be thin so use lacquer thinners not turpentine not benzene not sugar soap and make sure that you use the lacquer thinners it's methanol free and it removes any greasiness oiliness on the surface another important tip is to make sure that you work on a surface that has not received varnish for the past or last six months varnish and oil treated surfaces like linseed oil takes time to cure and you need to wait for those, that curing process before you can paint on it. Six months is a safe time to wait before you can paint onto newly varnished surfaces. But this is a very old piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share the colors as I work with them. The first color I'm going to use is Choco Cement Gray. And I'm working with an artist brush. I just want to clean it so that you can see the quality of the bristles. Because important, and this is the next important tip, is that the quality of your painting tools determine the quality of your paint work. So it's soft, smooth bristles, and it actually gives such an even beautiful finish on my surface. So I have cleaned with lacquer thinners. I'm now using an artist paint brush, and the reason for this is I'm working on very small areas. So your paint tool will differ from surface to surface. Larger areas, larger tools, smaller areas, smaller tools. I'm dipping my paintbrush in cement gray and I'm simply painting onto my surface. And Yaku, now you can zoom in. Yaku is the video guy for the day again. And I just make sure I paint evenly, smoothly, and I'm enjoying the process. That is the greatest tip I can give. And something that I always mention is that see me as a tool of inspiration to unleash the creativity um, and also to inspire. You might find ways that's easier to use and to apply a certain technique. So nothing I say is cast in stone. It's just advice and ways that work best and easiest for myself. So that is the painting process. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to spend too much time on that. But I must tell you, once you start, you actually don't want to stop. So most important, your first coat is always your base coat, your foundation coat. You want an even application. Um, Suzuki that paints with me, Simon Zondi, in the book, our chocolate book, his color, Simon says, 
is used with such a beautiful, I do want to share that with you. Let me just see where it is. Um, so Suzuki always says, Mama Nadine, jij plak die paint. So don't pluck the paint, paint evenly. So this is Suzuki, he's been with me in the store and he is being missed with all the preparations for Thursday. So last look how beautiful that is. We'll show decoupaging in another tutorial. And here we've also shown how to paint onto wall tiles because that's actually something that you can do with Jogo with great success if you clean your wall tiles properly with lacquer thinners. Allow your 40 minute drying time and then paint on it. So back to my chair, my first coat is my foundation coat. It needs to be done evenly, smooth, so that every coat thereafter has the same finish, even and smooth. Okay, so you find different colors and different co coverage due to different colors. With sheer, um, cement gray, the color I've just used, I will apply two coats. Two coats, very important when it comes to the application of coats, always allow your first coat to dry properly before you start applying your next coat. Okay, so once that is dry, the fun and playful part will start. Now you can decide, I just like it painted plain, simple gray, or a neutral color, or a color without any technique being applied to the surface, that's perfectly fine. Do whatever makes you happy. I am going to share and show how to successfully apply a dry brush technique. So the colors I'm going to use for my dry brush, and just to repeat the steps, I have applied my second coat on these areas. I have waited for my paint to dry. And more or less 40 minutes drying time is required before you start with the next application. I'm now going to play between the next colors. And you will see, I'm, for the dry brush technique, I'm predominantly using the 28 mils because they are more than enough to do a beautiful dry brush technique with and you still will have plenty paint left. Little paint really goes a long way. So I'm going to use with the colors Dove it, Lebos Light, Elvis Mix, Dance Wash, Cloud White, and Martin Smooth. You can use less colors. I'm just going to play around with these colors. You will see. All of these colors are a natural palette with warm undertones. So it will create that beautiful natural wooden look and feel. Now, I'm dipping my paintbrush, just the tip of my brush, into my paint. And next, and I can zoom in here, I remove as much paint as possible. And due to the fact that I have only dipped the edge of my brush in my paint. I'm not wasting much paint. So I remove most of the paint. I test and if I see brush strokes, try to brush strokes like that, I know that I will get a very natural dry brush effect. What I do next, and zoom in here on the hand and you can move closer, Yaku. that this is not a professional studio this is in our store I'm sharing ideas with you I am going to brush now never start a dry, dry brush technique in the center of your surface always start on the edge so what I'm going to do is I'm brushing you can see very subtly a sanded look and feel is created and I want it to be subtle so that it looks natural. There are no blocks of paint on my surface and everywhere where there is some flaws in the wood, it actually very naturally highlights that. There you can see when the 
chair maker many moons back built this chair he most probably did some wood filling over there and this is like applying a blush to your cheeks soft strokes and slowly but surely we're changing the color and the texture on this chair so tip a dry brush, that's why this technique is called dry brush, is key to success. And I can press hard because there's hardly any paint on my, on my brush. And I'm dipping it in the paint again, removing excess. This part is still wet because I've just done it. So I'm just focusing on this half of the chair. We will reveal the final once I finish it tonight. I'm not worried about this if paint touches these cane inserts as I will um, paint it in a solid white color, cloud white, right at the end. Very important with a dry brush technique, you can also change direction because the moment you change direction you actually emphasize other areas with detail this is my technique my life saving technique because if you don't know what to do with a piece or you just want to create a subtle change on the solid color this is a very subtle way of creating change and it's soft and beautiful. Now I'm going to play around between the colors. The next color I'm going to use is Elvis Mix. Because on Driftwood, you see many tones. You see gray tones, you see white tones, you see brown tones. I remove excess paint back into my jar so that nothing goes to waste dry my brush on my drop sheet on your clothes I don't have clothes left that doesn't have paint on them and now test I, can, I can't see anything so it will be fine and very subtly I'm changing this colour Jaco you tell me if it's visible on screen ok let's do it a bit more solid that you can see the change from a grey to some natural wooden looks. So very subtly I'm changing it so it has a brown wooden element on there. So the difference between warm tones and cool tones are the following and that is that warmer tones have more of a brown pigment to it than blue cold grays will have a blue tinge to it okay so all of these tones I'm using are warm tones and your warmer grays also go into a space um, very beautifully when you combine it with wooden elements so in the charcoal palette, Lebo's Light, Dawn's Wash, Vinya Stone, Martin's Mead are the warmer grey tones and colours. Okay, next, just to create some contrast, I'm going to add Cloud White. There you can see how it emphasizes the corner there. And although I'm painting wood, I'm loving what I'm doing and I'm going to reuse this piece instead of chucking it away. And that's the purpose with Jogo is to show that all pieces of furniture and items can receive a new chance and a new opportunity and new life and new life. Okay, and now I'm doing white, cloud white,
removing excess and the same steps apply. And because there's so little paint on my brush, I can really press harder on my surface. Moving in different directions to create different contrasts. And now, I'm going to show you how to do a driftwood technique on a raw timber surface, like fine, fine wood. Okay, so you dry brush, dry brush, dry brush, um, use various natural tones. Even the use of these four colors are perfect to create the technique. And just to refresh you on the colors we used, it was cement gray as a solid color. Then we dry brushed with level slide, then Alvis mix, and then cloud white. Okay. On a raw timber surface, to create a beautiful um, driftwood effect, is we first going to whitewash or lime wash the surface. Now, very important, we couldn't do that technique on this varnished surface. Because what needs to happen, the raw wood can absorb the moisture, whereas with a varnish coating, it actually prevents the paint from seeping into the wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start with a lime wash or a white wash technique. So I take a cloth, mutton cloth, I dip it in water, I first wet my wood with the water. And very important, this is raw, untreated wood. Next, I apply my cement grain onto my damp cloth. And what I do is I just work the paint into my cloth so it's evenly distributed into my cloth. Hold my cloth. In South Africa, we eat Cook, or in other parts of the world, you can roll a ball in the palm of your hand. Come visit us in South Africa, experience our hospitality. Okay, now I lime wash, white wash, it's the same technique, my raw timber surface to create a grey look onto my wood. Now with lime wash or white wash, you don't actually cover the wood with paint. So you can still see the grain of the wood. It's a very natural way of staining wood and creating a driftwood effect. Now I'm going to use the same techniques as shown earlier. I'm going to start with levels light, dip only, the tips of my paintbrush in the level slide. I have a piece here that I've done earlier, so it has dried already. Just allow for your, air, your surface that you've lime wash on to dry a bit, 40 minutes, before you start with a dry brush technique. And I brush. So very subtly, I start changing the color on my raw wood. Dip it in my levels light so this is the color that i'm busy dry brushing with exactly the same steps as i've shown on the chair this is now just a raw wood surface and i brush next color is alvis mix there it is, there's my brush. I still have some Alvis mix on this mess I've created on the floor, and I'm just going to take some from there. Remove excess, just for that 
bit of brownness that you see on the drift root. It's done very subtly, but it's there. And now I'm finishing it off with cloud water. Remove excess. And this will just emphasize all the natural elements on the wood. I can change direction. And here I've created my own piece of driftwood. in a few easy steps. Now chalk oil has a built-in sealer. I wouldn't even have to apply a sealant on my chair. It has a matte finish which is beautiful. If you are a person that likes more of a satin finish to your surface, you can apply our clear glaze and I like to, it depends on personal preference, first of all. If you like a more of a satin finish, follow the instructions on the left three parts glaze, one part cool filled water, and the next day, especially us living in a coastal area, you will apply it with a damp microfiber cloth. If you want to tone down the sheen level, you can manipulate the glaze mix and mix one part glaze with one part cool foil water. The reason for the cool foil water is the fact that water contaminates paint products, and if you have any glaze mix left, you can always put it in an airtight container and use later again. And then also do the application with a damp microfiber cloth. Okay, that's been a mouthful. I hope that you are inspired to try out this technique. And my message for today is that I've read an article earlier this week on cyberbullying in schools, actually a newsletter that we received from the school. And I realize so often, and I see it even on, on Facebook pages as well, you think that you leave a faceless message. But we should always teach our children and also remind ourselves that every message being left, doesn't matter whether it's on a phone, on a WhatsApp call, on a Facebook page, on social media, gets received by a person with a face and a heart. So if we want to teach our children something this week to follow, is to take care of other people's hearts and to know that everything we say and do um, gets received by another person. So if we spread a message of positivity and looking after each other's hearts, the world will be a very beautiful place. Stay creative, create beautiful, uplifting projects, share it with us, and then we will be back next week with more inspiration and ideas. Love to all. Bye.